Hello everyone, welcome back. So this time we're going to be going over the vector cross product. Now last time we learned about the scalar cross product, which is force times distance. They had to be perpendicular to each other. And sometimes that meant we had to do a little bit of trigonometry. This time we're doing the vector cross product. Um, so let's see how that works. So usually the big reason for learning about this is because of that 90 degree angle thing. Remember those two vectors, they had to be 90 degrees from each other for you to be able just to use their magnitude. Like, if it weren't at 90 degrees, you couldn't just use the magnitude to calculate it. Um, however, the vector cross product gets rid of all of that. Um, what's going to happen is when we take the vector cross product, we get a vector. Um, now you're like, wait a second, um, wasn't that moment like a scalar earlier? Um, and Yes, but what we were getting was the magnitude of this moment vector. Now, the interesting thing is that this vector we're going to be calculating, this moment vector, is going to be perpendicular to both of our original vectors. Um, if we take the magnitude of it, then we get our original answer from the scalar cross product. So, how do we do this? Well, first off, you can be very careful. Um, using that right hand rule you're going to figure out what direction this moment vector is going to be pointing but once again if you get it wrong it'll just be a negative sign um, and you should figure it out fairly quickly and there are various ways to write this vector cross product um, the first is to think about it this way it's a b sine of theta times the unit vector in the perpendicular direction so this will give me the vector form of it if I get rid of the unit vector, just don't even worry about that, then this is the magnitude of the moment, the magnitude of the moment. So if I know the angle between the two vectors, which I might be able to calculate, and I know their magnitudes, I can solve for the cross product. Ooh, bounce out of there. Now, this is all well and good, but like, what about this unit vector? How am I going to figure out that? That might be a bit more difficult. However, there are other ways to do this. Now let's think about some little bit of notation before we do this. First off, we're going to be taking two vectors, um, and they're going to be having i, j, and even possibly k components. Um, when we take the cross product, we're going to have to cross these components, which means we multiply the numbers together, but then we cross the vectors together. Um, and so we need to learn some little rules. Well, the first thing is that you can write this little circle right here, going around in a circle. And as long as you are going counterclockwise from I to J to K in order, then when you cross them, you get a positive thing. So I cross J is equal to K. J cross K is equal to I. K cross I equal to J. If I go the opposite direction, it's negative. So J cross I is equal to negative K. K cross J equal to negative I, and all the way down. Another thing is that if you cross something with itself, it equals zero. And we figured that out from our original equation because it was said a, b, sine of theta. If it's in the same exact direction, what is the angle? It would be zero. And sine of zero is zero. So those components just disappear. Now from this, you can then work it out. So the way you usually do it is you write out something like this. Um, we normally write it as a determinant with the i, j, and k components on top, and the x, y, and z are i, j, k components of vectors. We're not here, just the numbers. And we cross everything. Um, we can save ourselves some time in the fact that j times itself is just equal to zero. We don't care about that. Um, so that doesn't do anything. But everything else has to be taken into account. Now, the way I always learned about it was this. You reach out, you put your finger over part of this, and then you draw an x and multiply those two. So ay times bz, by times az, and you subtract those. So ay times bz minus by times az. Okay? This one minus that one. And then we do it again. And I'm going to have to erase my screen because I really closed it up. And we cover up this one we don't look at it anymore. And then we just do this times this minus this times this ax times bz minus bx times az. We're doing all the possible combinations. And then we get to the last one. And finally, we get down to here. Erase the line on the slide. We cover up this one. And so we go all the way through. 
one thing you have to be careful about is when I do I cross K, that's in the wrong order. And so it becomes negative J. You see right here, negative J. Um, if I had done it the reverse, it would have been fine. I could have done AZ, BX, minus AX, BZ, and gotten this exact same thing. Um, just the negative sign would have gone on the inside. Just really depends on how you do it. You just got to be careful about it. But with this, you eventually will get three components. An I component, a J component, and a K component. This is your moment vector. And it is perpendicular to both of your original vectors. That's important. It's perpendicular to both of your original vectors. And with that, you have the cross product. You can start solving things. It works out very, very, very well. Now, um, moving on from this, I think I have one more slide. Yes. Moving on from this, we can then calculate the moment. Because if we know the force and the position vectors, if we know both their forms, we can, can then calculate this moment vector. So this can be a lot simpler than trying to do the scalar approach. So use it. If you know the information, use it. If you don't, well, that's just how it is. Um, and also, if you can't remember this, you can always fall back on the scalar approach. It's just when you get to three dimensions, it gets a lot of components, and you can sometimes get confused. I know I do. So if you actually know the force vectors form, use this um, vector approach. It will be a lot faster. Um, and so just writing this similarly as we did last time, now instead of A and B, we have the position vector and the force vector. We in the end get this formula, which is just the set formula that's already done for you, which is pretty nice, you know, hey, never say I didn't give you anything, um, for the moment of these position vector and this force vector. And that would be it. Now, each of these is if you take the magnitude of this, you'll get the magnitude of your moment. So that's the last thing you'll have to do. But it shouldn't be too terribly hard. And also, if you know the magnitude of this moment vector, you can then calculate the angle, going back to our original equation, a, b, sine of theta. You can then calculate this angle theta between two vectors, which is a really good detail to have. It's actually very, very helpful. Oh, gone a little bit too far. So with that, um, we'll cut it here. And I will see all of you next time as we start working through some examples to really drive this home. So I hope this helped you, and I'll see all of you next time. Bye-bye.